Hello everyone, you're welcome to In His Love channel. My name is Pedita, how are you doing? Good? Awesome. Good to see you again, it's been a while. I know. Don't mind me, just don't mind me. Just take it as you see it. <laughs> this YouTube thing is not easy. Oh man. Anyway, have you guys been good? How have you guys been doing? How's work, school, all of that good stuff? How's hustle and bustle? Good? Great, great, great. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, the word of God. You know, like when we go to church, for those of us that do go to church, you know, what is it that you're looking for to, to receive at the end of the day from that service? You know, what is your aim? What is your hope? As far as the word of God, now I'm not talking about the praise, worship, dancing, all of that. No, I'm just straight to the word of God. What, what exactly is it that you're looking for at the end of the day? You know, are you looking to be encouraged? That would be good that you're encouraged because in our, our, our daily life, you know, we're hustling, we're struggling, we're going to work, coming back, doing one thing or the other, you know, taking care of the family, the children, your schoolwork is overwhelming, name it. Everything is just happening, you know, like, it's like, ah, can I just breathe, you know? And then on on Sunday, you know, you wind up over the week, the weekend, and then Sunday you're like, ah, let me go to church, you know, and hear the word of God. You know, hear something that will encourage me, something that will lift me up, somebody that something that will push me, you know, to have that strength to go again into the world, the next, the new week that is coming. I don't know about you, but that's what I would. Me personally, for myself, that's what I would like, really hope to receive at the end of a church service. So, um, I was listening to um, this pastor. You see him, I don't want to keep mentioning their names. So, you know, it won't be like, you know, you're, you're against them. You know, <laughs> some people will think, you know, I'm against them. You know, I'm, I'm talking about the man of God. You know, it's, it's really not about the person. It's really not about the person. It's about the, the message that he or she is preaching. It's about the, you know, the teachings from that person. Does it match the words of Christ? Does it match what Christ has taught us, how he has laid the foundation for us that call ourselves Christians to follow? Does it match? That's all I care about. I don't care who is preaching it. It could be the mightiest man of god it could be a young man of god it could be a little baby it could be anybody it doesn't matter so if you are in this channel get it straight <laughs> i'm not after your papa or your mama i'm just after the words that is coming out of their mouth let it align with the word of god that's all i'm saying so anyway so this preacher is preaching and um he was preaching for like, what, like eight, seven minutes. And I don't think he even used any scripture at all, you know. And he was just talking and talking and talking about um, demons and, you know, what the enemy is, is, is doing. You know, I don't understand why some of these preachers preach so much. Like they take so much time and energy to teach their congregation about the devil and how the devil works like what is the aim of preachings like that at the end of the service what is the aim what are they aiming at and then you too that went to that service what is your aim what are you trying to receive at the end of a message like that what will it bring to you you know okay so let's analyze this video together and uh, before i forget if you haven't uh subscribed to this channel feel free subscribe to the channel uh like the video if you do and share share to your friends your family your co-workers anyone out there that you think will benefit from this share to them and um 
uh, give us a, a like so that way the message can go um, out to other people. So let's go ahead and watch the video together. When my elder brother ran mad, you know what it means to run mad? Yeah, I, I witnessed it myself. I've seen that. They brought my elder sister from school and this right leg was two times fatter than this left leg. What was the problem? They said they were taking her, her to the theater to amputate one of the legs. The one of the doctors now said, okay, let them tear the leg open and see what is inside. When they tore it open, what came out was pores, two buckets of pores from one, one leg. Two buckets. My other brother had a sickness that could not be diagnosed in any hospital in Nigeria. They took his fingernails and his hair to London. And after analysis, it came back zero. There was a linkage. So all of us were churchgoers. We didn't know Jesus. We like to be Christians, and when we feel fun, we say Christianity. But the controller of the space, demons were ascending and descending. I pray that somebody will be provoked in this place. <laughs> um, the story, for those of us that don't understand where the story is coming from and where it's going, um, he's, he's supposed to be explaining why um his um facial uh deformity he that he can never get healing from it why he can never get healing from why his face is deformed you know like that and um this is the story so he's talking about his family how his sister was sick how this and that and his brother and everything and you know um and then he's talking about the 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 controller of this of the space which space so i'm um, you know the earth the controller of, of the space are demons you know why should demon be controlling the earth that we live in that we god have put in position to be in control of the earth why should you know demons be the one controlling the earth and then we as humans we don't have control we're just helpless. But let's continue. But the controller of the space, demons were ascending and descending. I pray that somebody will be provoked in this place. <laughs> Strange things. So by the time my mom was going to deliver me, I came out from the womb with facial palsy. Half of my face paralyzed day to day. And I asked God, when I started knowing God, I asked him, why did you allow me to come like this? He said, young man, the people that sought your life, one of them was a midwife in the hospital where you were supposed to be conceived. And when they saw you like this, they felt their arrow work. This is, this your thing is what kept you. I said, okay, okay, now you have kept me. Can we negotiate how the healing can come? He said, no, that will be your, your trademark. No healing will come for that one. <laughs> Just a sign that you pass through that place, that furnace. This is a sign. I've seen manipulations of all kinds. <laughs> huh? Or oh, these, these pastors, they can tell stories, eh? Kai. And it's his story. I was not there. <laughs> I was not there. You were not there. It's his story. Now, do I believe it? That's left for me. Do you believe it? That's left for you. You know, but they can tell stories. Ah, they can tell stories. So he's explaining, you know, that his, why his uh, uh, face, half of his face was uh, paralyzed like that. Uh, because the midwife, the midwife, um, they were happy when they saw him come out. When, they gave birth, when his mother gave birth to him, they were happy to see half of his face paralyzed like that because they felt like yes they have succeeded in the plans that they they planned to do upon his life they succeeded so they were happy you know so him now is now going to i guess god and say ah, okay god 
they've succeeded and everything but what's how far now are you going to cure you know heal the face for me and god was like no you remain like that because you know that is a trademark so that whenever they see you you know they like maybe to scare them away what 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 the heck is he talking about so god could not protect him as a child coming out from his mother's womb you know without nothing in his face god god will not be able to protect him here on earth like it doesn't make sense like i don't understand like <sighs> let's hear it again it's just no healing will come for that one <laughs> just a sign that you pass through that place that furnace this is a sign i've seen manipulations of all kinds and people need to weep for themselves if there is no priesthood if there is no fire within their space it's something to weep about because you might see a baby born today and everybody is, is celebrating ah! but demons are still ascending and descending and one day one of the demons will descend with that baby there is no need to rejoice about anything that happens because as long as the linkage leads to the underworld that your joy can be turned to mourning suddenly hey Woo. i'm sorry i'm sorry to offend those you know that follow him you know um that take him as a mentor but what he's preaching right now is a message of doom that demons are the ones that are control that, that are in, con in control are sending up and down. Then he's telling God's people not to rejoice when something good happens in their life. For example, when you have a baby, you should not be rejoicing because your rejoicing can be turned to, to mourning in a twinkling of, a, of an eye. You should not be rejoicing. Whatever happened to the word of God that says rejoice? And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice with those who rejoice. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Whatever happened to all those verses? You guys put some on the comments. Put some joyful uh, uh, verses, Bible verses on the comments for me. Whatever happened to all of that? And he's telling people not to rejoice when something good happens. What kind of message of doom? What kind of demonic message? What kind of antichrist message is he preaching like where you know when where is this message leading to at the end of the service where is this message leading to i will tell you where it's leading to it's only leading to one place and one place only fear putting fear in the hearts of the people suddenly 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 someone coming from a personal parade somewhere in the north to go home here in the east and then right there in local jack the accident was not even very intense everybody came out without a scratch but somebody died that's what happens when death casts a shadow when people become nominal christians and they go to church on sunday to sing him Okay, why is he why is he laughing it's not funny it's not funny this guy is putting serious fear in the minds of these christians christians so these are christians in church in his church or wherever I'm, I'm i'm guessing most of them are born again christians most of them and he's putting this much fear in them and he's laughing and making a joke out of it like, Job, like Jacob tonight, I pray that God will open your eyes in the name of Jesus. Everything going wrong. And you know, my dad studied to PhD level. The first inclination he will have is to analyze the situation cerebrally. And a time came when there was no cerebral 
logic you could bring to the table that could explain why the events were taking place. So it took time before my father accepted that somebody somewhere is responsible because he will analyze it. Yes, maybe the, the, the heavy metals, the heavy metals in this case. Uh, <laughs> what you need is a dream like, like Jacob for your spiritual eyes to be open to see the same context that your natural eyes is seeing that your natural eyes cannot give interpretation to your spiritual eyes will open tonight in the name of Jesus okay, what you need is to know the word of God concerning your life what you need is to know the truth of what Christ has done already done for you what you need is to know that truth that Christ has paid it all for you. And believe and live your life. Live your life. Don't worry about demons in, the, in his space, in the, in the air. Who, 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 who are demons? Who are demons when you, when, you, when you carry Christ in you? Who are demons? What does scripture say? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So who, who, who is that demon? Who are demons? Who are whatever he's saying that are controlling which space? You know? <laughs> Linkages and demons can be ascending and descending. Ascending and descending. New ideas from the kingdom of darkness coming into the family. And before you know it, new dimensions of reproach will be administered. Because demons are receiving messages and are administering things that are coming from the heart of the wickedness that is in the kingdom of darkness. And as long as there is no altar to challenge the position, there is no one that says, okay, that one became an ezemo. This one, worship water spirit. Me, I will worship Holy Ghost. Except somebody gives himself to God as an offering. That should waste and spoil. So that others can rise. The story will never change. He said unless someone will stand, you know, that will give himself as an offering. As a sacrifice for his or her family to waste. And, and whatever he said. You know that that person will waste and give himself in, as a sacrifice, as an altar. I'm guessing in prayer and waste and waste. He used the word waste. You know, nothing will ever change in that family. What do you mean? Who, who, who? Ah, Jesus. What kind of message is this? Like. Why don't these people ever preach about grace, the grace of God? Why? Like, I don't understand. Why don't they ever talk about, tell the people that everything has been paid for? Why, why, don't, they tell, why don't they tell them that the power of God is greater than the power of, of demons? They'll be preaching demons, demons, morning till night, loading this congregation, this gullible congregation with fear. With the spirit of fear. And that's that's not what was was supposed that's not how we're supposed to live. We're not supposed to live in fear because we carry the greater one in us. We 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 are we are filled with his power, with his grace, with his strength. Everything God has equipped us with when we study our Bible and know it from the scripture. And yet he's loading them with fear, loading them with fear, preaching about demons up and down, how demons are in control of everything in their lives and how they have no control unless somebody will sacrifice his or herself. Jacob said, this is a terrible place. That's a place he used his two legs to enter. But anywhere priesthood has entered, it's, it's a terrible place. It's a terrible place. You cannot understand it because it's a trading floor for spiritual entities. It's just like the stock exchange house where you trade stocks. 
that's how spiritual entities trade in destiny they trade in life they trade these spiritual entities that he's talking about that are trading and trading stuff and trading everything all around your life and you have no control see that's that's a lie when when you know god and you you are you are you give your life to him you know you 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 have him responsible for your life like god is in charge of your life you've dedicated your whole being which all of them in this uh program i believe most of them have if if they don't love god they will not be here in the first place so yes they love god you know so when you when you when you are under the covering of god almighty spiritual whatever i say in trading they are trading this trade they cannot be trading anything concerning your life when you did not permit them to you know they can't just just come they can't they can't come near you do, like this preacher does not understand the power behind you know when the the redemption power he has no clue what the redemption power is you know that power where we were transformed from darkness into his marvelous light so you're telling me one uh, 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 forces and demons and and uh, uh, spirits in the air will be coming and be trading things anyhow up and down they will enter light that you are not in light they will not enter into that light to come and be trading their rubbish upon you how now how <laughs> that can happen <laughs> it can never happen it can never happen you know they just love, they love to preach like this because it makes them look like they are the powerful one it makes them look like they know god more than you it makes them look like they have more a uh, privilege um uh from god more than you of course they will be the one to pray for you and deliver you and set you and your family free you know and then they will give you all kinds of fearful prayer points that you'll be praying and binding and losing every demon that is attacking your family no nothing 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 you've been transformed from the kingdom of darkness to his marvelous light why can't we just accept accept it like that like why can't we believe what that scripture says let him finish if there is no priesthood you become a victim of trade the altar begins to cry we need one more life this time we need a virgin 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 and it is you you have been going to church kept yourself as a virgin and <laughs> you can become an object of trade wow 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 so the spirits they will be trading and trading and they will be you know they will now come and say ah this guy is just teaching about demons Sha. He's, that's all he's teaching about demons demons and how they will be how they will deal with you and deal with your life fear everywhere his message is fear from beginning to the end did you see that young young guy he was praying he was praying his mouth lips were moving like he was praying you know and he's going like this going like i that is fear he oh my goodness that that little boy is so afraid that young man is so afraid like you, i can tell you know what is jesus says say, don't be like the pharisees that pray you know they will make noise and make noise and pray you know because you know because they don't believe what they are saying is just out of their lips say we shouldn't be like that you know we shouldn't be like them they will pray pray re repeat 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 repetition repetition why because of their own belief so he's laughing saying eh, and that the demons will now say ah this time they need a virgin they need a virgin. look look just look at the way he was doing they need a virgin so the the poor virgins that are there now they'll be so afraid they'll be afraid you know they'll be thinking ah are they coming for me or should i go and break my virginity no point keeping it before demons will come you know like crazy so so horrible so horrible this 
so-called message of demons that this guy is preaching is is horrible it's horrible this is not christ there's no christ here he has remember he has not mentioned any work that christ did in all of this preaching that he's preaching how can they they can't mention nothing they can't because when they mention christ the work of christ it makes them irrelevant and they don't like that feeling they want to be that that big man in the picture they want to be that person that high person in the picture of the lives of their congregants you can become an object of trade To see the context of the true battle and then you will know that more than half of us here are not prepared for life more than half of us more than half of us on this field on this ground <coughs> are a comic are a joke they are not prepared for life every time Hamatan comes the elders will come and gather and say Kai, there's too much cold we need a fire what they are saying is the land has been quiet without mourning for long we need a barrier we have we have not eaten cow we have not eaten goat meat it is long they brought offering to me so guys so what is your what is your purpose when you go to church what are you aiming at receiving at the end of the service in terms of the the word of god the message that you're you're going to be listening to what is your aim what is your aim are you gonna wait I, do you see yourself you know like do you go home with more fear in you fear of the devil fear of the strong man fear of uh your enemies Fear of what's the spirit realm, what they are doing, the trading, how they are trading your life according to his message. Are you filled with fear? Like you go home and start suspecting everybody in your family. You start suspecting the elders. You saw him make example of the elders. You go home and be suspecting the elders. You'll be suspecting your uncle, your auntie, your even your parents, even your siblings. All because you went to listen to a message that is full of fear. You know, let me let me read a, a scripture for us quickly before we round up. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, and it reads, Preach the word of God. This was Paul charging um Timothy, you know, with with the word, encouraging him. And he told him, he said, Preach the word of God, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not patiently correct that means when you're correcting you correct people you know give them time to digest the correction you've given them give them time to understand why they need to make that change be patient with them patiently correct rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching this teaching is it good this teaching that we have heard pastor arume do is is that a good teaching has this teaching brought any encouragement other than fear other than fear and then living in suspicion of everybody around you be careful what you listen to as message Am I saying that the message you the message you listen you should we listen to should be all rosy 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 good good you know <laughs> message like uh for example uh Pastor Joe Austin if any any of us that know him here no that's not what I'm talking not that kind of message not that oh everything's gonna be all right you have no problem no 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 I'm saying it shouldn't be about demons morning to night. It shouldn't be about the devil, morning to night. It shouldn't be about your en enemies, morning to night. It should be a word of encouragement, reminding you of the cross and 
the payment in full that has been paid for you. So you will not be deceived. When those, when signs of all those uh, kind of uh, struggle in life or trials in life, when they start to show their ugly faces, because they will show, it's part of life. So, but when they start to show their ugly faces, you'll be able to stand putting on your whole armor of faith. That's the message of encouragement, not this one. So guys, thank you all for listening. Um, leave your comments, leave your thoughts. Um, let me know what you think and um, share the video, like the video, give it a thumbs up if you will and remain in his love. Let's study the word of God for ourselves. Let's know scriptures for ourselves, not just scripture, but let's know what Christ is saying at the end of the day. That's the, that's the bottom part of everything. That's the whole co cocoa of everything. So God bless you all. I'll see you on my next video. Remain in his love. Bye.